Dear learners, I hope you are fine. In this video, we are quickly going to see that how we can use inverse kinematics to drive an RRP SCARA robot on a defined trajectory. This SCARA robot will do something like this, that it will start from a starting point, it will go to a certain location, then it will pick up an object by using the prismatic joint at the end, and then it will move on to the drop location, and it will drop that object using once again the prismatic joint. So let us see that how we can achieve this thing in the Simulink environment using inverse kinematics through robotic system toolbox. So here is the multi-body model of the robot which I have already made. If you don't know how to make this thing, then you should better refer to my previous videos in which I have talked about how to design robotic manipulators in MATLAB. So right now in this Simulink model, we need the trajectory on which we want our robot to move. And then we are going to feed that trajectory to the inverse kinematics block it is going to generate joint angles and those joint angles will be provided to our robot and the robot will move. At the end, we are going to compare the workspace trajectory that we wanted our robot to move on with the trajectory on which the robot moved using this scope. So the very first thing we need is the trajectory. So I'm going to use a signal builder to generate the trajectory. But before moving on, let me show you that what trajectory do I want. This is the initial location of my robot in the workspace. It has the coordinates of 1.025 in x-axis, 0 in y-axis, and 0.625 in z-axis. I want my robot to move from this initial location to this first pickup location. The coordinates of these, this point are 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0.625 in x, y, and z-axis. At this point, I want the prismatic joint to move downwards a bit and pick up the object. And after that, it should move upwards, and then the robot should follow this line or this trajectory and reach at this drop-off location. The coordinates of the drop-off location are 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.625. Once again, the prismatic joint will be used to drop off the object at a certain height, and after that, the robot should move to this initial location. So I want this trajectory to be followed. So the very first step is I want to generate this trajectory. And now we should go back to the Simulink environment and try to generate the trajectory. So in the signal builder block, we have to generate some custom signals. You can generate the custom signal by going into signal, then new, and then custom. Over here, you should specify the time values and the y values. For this task, we need three different trajectories. That is the trajectory in x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So we need three such signals. So I'm going to generate the time values first. So at time zero, my end effector will be at a certain position. Then let's suppose by using one second, it will reach the pickup location. And by using further 0.5 second, it will pick up the object by moving downwards. And then it will once again take 0.5 second to move back upwards. After that, it is going to use one more second to move to the first corner of the triangle. And then one more second to move to the drop off location. There at the drop off location, it will once again use 0.5 seconds to drop off the object and 0.5 seconds to come back up. After that, it will take further one second to go to the initial pickup location. So these are the time values. So I'm going to use these time values for the X trajectory, Y trajectory, and Z trajectory. So now I'm going to give the X trajectory first. So for the X trajectory, if you remember, the very first point was 1.025. Then it will go to the pickup location and its X coordinate was 0.7. Then it will remain at x.7 because the prismatic joint is moving downwards. So once again, I'm going to give 0.7. And after that, the prismatic joint will be coming up. So the x point will remain the same. So once again, it will be 0.7. After that, it is going to move to the first corner of the triangle. Its x coordinate was 0.4. And then it is going to move to the drop of location whose x coordinate was 1.4 again. Sorry, it was 0.4 again. And over there, it is going to first drop the object, then come back upwards. And at the end, it is going to go to the initial location of the pickup. And it had x coordinates of 0.7. So these are all the x coordinates which I want my robot to traverse. So this is the signal, the x signal, which I want. Now I can delete this first signal. I don't want this thing. And I can rename this signal to, let's suppose, x trajectory. After that, I once again need another signal, 
its time values are going to be same. So I have copy and pasted the previous time values. Now I want to define the Y trajectory. That is the Y coordinates which my end effector should traverse. So at the very first point, the Y coordinate was zero. After that, at the pickup location, it was 0.3. Then when the prismatic joint was going down, it was 0.3. And when the prismatic joint was coming up, it was once again 0.3. After that, for moving to the first corner of the triangle, the Y point was once again 0.3. And at the drop off location, the y coordinate was 0.6. Then, for dropping the object and coming back up, I need 2.6. Then, going to the initial pickup location, the y coordinate is once again 0.3. So, these are all the y coordinates which the end effector should traverse. Let me rename this signal as y trajectory. And now I need the last signal, which is of z axis. Once again, the time values would be the same. For z axis, the initial location had a z coordinate of 0.625. Then the pickup location firstly had 0.625 as pickup point. And then when the end effector is going downwards, x and y were not changing, but z axis was changing. So, how much downward do you want to move your robot? It depends on your application. So, let's suppose I want to move it downward by 0.3 units. So, now the z axis should be 0.325. After that, it will come up at 0.625 once again. Then it will move to the corner of the triangle where it will be 0.625 once again. And at the drop of location, it will be 0.625 again. And when you want to drop it, you want to lower it to 0.325. Then come upwards at 0.625 and go back to the initial pickup location, which had the Z coordinate at 0.625. So that's it. So this is the last signal. I can rename it as Z trajectory. So we have defined the workspace trajectory, that is the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the workspace trajectory. Now we want to give these three signals to inverse kinematics block so that it can generate joint angles for our robot and the robot can move. First of all, we need to mux these signals together. So I'm going to use a mux with three inputs. And now I should convert these three workspace coordinates into homogeneous transformation metric. For that, I can use coordinate transformation block from robotic system toolbox, which is this one, coordinate transformation conversion. I'm going to provide translation vector to it, and it should give me the homogeneous transformation. That's it. Now this homogeneous transformation matrix should be given to the inverse kinematics block. Once again, I'm going to get the inverse kinematic block from the robotic system toolbox, which is over here. So I should give the pose to this input. And these two inputs are weights and initial guess. Weights input should be provided with a constant of six values. And these six values will define that how much weightage this inverse kinematics block is going to give to which coordinate. Axis. First three numbers are for rotation about x axis, y axis, and z axis. So we are not concerned with those rotations, but we are concerned with the translation along these axes. So the fourth and the fifth and the sixth values represent that how much weight it should be given to x, y, and z coordinate. So I am going to assign ones, which means the maximum weightage. After that, the initial guess is that what are the initial joint locations? As we have three joints, and all the initial locations are zeros, so I'm going to provide three zeros. After that, you should double click on this block to configure some more parameters. The very first thing is we want to provide the rigid body tree to this inverse kinematics block so that it can calculate the inverse kinematics related to your robot. So I've already loaded the rigid body tree of my robot with the name my Rob, which is over here in the workspace. So I'm going to click it. And then I have to select the end effector. It is body three, that is the last body. And after that, I'm going to adjust some parameters over here. You can use both of these methods, but this Levenberg Marquet method is much more stable than this gradient projection method. I'm going to use this thing. And just to speed up the thing, I'm going to increase these tolerances a bit because otherwise it is going to take too long.
that's it now you can click ok and this is our finalized inverse kinematics now it will give us the joint angles you can directly provide these joint angles to your robot and the robot should move on those joint angles now the last thing that remains is we want to compare the trajectory on which the robot is moving and the trajectory that we wanted our robot to move on so for that i'm going to delete this thing and i'm going to need a mux over here so that i can mux these two trajectories one coming from the robot and the other one coming from the reference trajectory so i'm going to provide these two signals to the scope and it will plot these two signals on the same graph so that i can compare them visually and that's everything now we just need to run this thing as we have a trajectory for six seconds only so i have written simulation time as six over here and now i'm going to run it so here is the simulation it has completed and in the front view you can see that what the robot is doing it is moving from the initial location to the pickup location and then it is moving to the drop off location and after dropping the object at the drop off location it is coming back to the original location so you can change the views from here and you can see the isometric view as well or for the top view you can select the top view from this menu and you will see that how the SCARA robot is moving on the defined trajectory and doing its job on the other hand if you want to examine the trajectory through graphs then here are the three graphs showing you the workspace trajectory which you wanted the robot to move on so this yellow line is the x trajectory blue line is the y trajectory and red is the z trajectory so if i just turn on the x trajectory of the robot and it is perfectly overlapping this yellow line and you can see that whatever trajectory you have provided in the x-axis the robot is following that trajectory and if i turn the y trajectory of the robot as well it will be shown by a purple color so it will be perfectly overlapping the blue trajectory that is the reference trajectory in y x and at the end cyan color is showing the robot's trajectory in z axis and it is overlapping the z axis trajectory which you have provided so learners i hope now you can use the inverse kinematics from the robotic system toolbox to drive any robot on the defined workspace trajectory if you have any queries i am always available through youtube comments don't forget to like and subscribe our channel so keep learning and take care thank you